just a quick video today. Um, I have this uh, switch mode power supply, actually pretty nice one that I cut out of uh, an old, I think probably an old modem router or something like that. But I was kind of looking uh, for parts and found this and it's a pretty hefty one, a few amp, I don't know exactly how much. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty nice, so I cut it out. There was some isolation slots, so it was actually pretty easy. Um, so this puts outputs, I think, about 15 volts, actually, yeah. If you look here, puts out about 15 volts. And um, I was just looking into using a DC to DC converter to take the 15 volts and uh, switch it to uh, something about 23. And then I thought, maybe we can just modify this power supply to output about 23 volts. These caps are good for 25. It's, it's getting close, but they should be okay. There's probably some overhead anyways. Um, so one of the first steps you want to look for is where the reference voltage comes from. Um, and so here we can see a, a TL431 or 431 type chip. Can't really see it in this lighting. I'll get some better uh, views. So then what you do is you look for the, the voltage divider, which sets the uh, voltage for the thing. And um, the reference pin is this first one. And then uh, it appears to be that the divider is set um, by these two resistors, <clears throat> one uh, tied to the output voltage and one tied to ground. So what we need to do is calculate um, a new divider to uh, modify the uh, output. So let's go figure out what we need to do. We'll take a closer look at the resistors and um, we'll see what we can come up with. All right, so before we, before we proceed with the uh, modification, let's just uh, do a quick test, double check to make sure that the voltage is actually the 15 volts that is uh, marked here. All right, we're set up here. Let's give it some AC power. And we have 15.2 uh, volts, so it is indeed 15 volts. So let's uh, modify it and see if we can get uh, 20, 23 about. Okay, so there we just saw the TL431 uh, reference. And here we can see the reference pin for the TL431. We can see the lower half of the divider and also the upper half of the divider, the 51K and the 10K. So what we're gonna have to do is modify this 51K or replace it with something that will give us the output voltage we desire. All right, so we need to calculate the, the resistor divider we need to have the uh, correct uh, output reference voltage here. Um, so here we can see the formula uh, you could also look in the data sheet. It's a very long data sheet. This is just a quick, easy way to get what we need. Um, so here's here's the equation, and then down at the bottom of this site uh, that I'll link in, uh, we have the voltage that we're going to want to output here, and um, our 12 in this case is uh, it's a 10k. So let's uh, put in a 10K and then this will calculate um, what we need as the other resistor. For, for, so for right now we have about 15, well, let's do uh, 15 volts. And we can see if this matches the uh, other resistor, which it basically does. I think it's a 50, 5100, something like that. So, you know, it's a, a bit over 15 volts. So um, for uh, 23 volts, We'd need a uh, 82k resistor. So let's go in and uh, bodge a 82, uh, or we'll replace at least the uh, 82 or the 51k resistor with an 82k resistor, and see if we can get 23 volts on the output.
All right, so we've made the modification to the voltage reference for the feedback uh, for this SMPS. And um, we're going to give it a, a test. We have uh, 120 volts, almost 119 volts going into the uh, current limiting circuit. If there's a short circuit, we should be uh, protected. And we're going to turn it on and we're going to see if we have explosions or bulbs lighting or possibly even 23 volts are around there. So I'm going to turn it on now. And okay, we have to turn this guy on too. We have 21 volts. Hmm. Seems as though it's uh, climbing. Seems a bit unsteady actually. Let's turn this off. Okay, so let's have a look and see if we can uh, show what was going on uh, with the chip after we modified the uh, output voltage. So let's have a look at the schematic on page 18. Um, and then we kind of see kind of uh, a demo, I guess a demo circuit here. Um, and it's a little bit different from the one we were uh, looking at, there's actually two output voltages here, one with um, direct feedback. So what we've done, if we've modified the uh, feedback circuit, we have the the 431 uh, kind of an adjustable zener in a way. So we've uh, made an adjustment to um, the voltage divider that sets the reference pin for this um, adjustable voltage output here. And um, here you can see there's a uh, 5 volt output and they just set 4Ks on either one. In our case we had a 10K and a 51K and we set the um, one of the resistors to the uh, top resistor here to a 82K. So we have an 82K and a 10K which would give us an output of 23 volts here. Um, so we had that, and as, as far as I could tell, everything was basically correct. These values were a little bit different too. This uh, R, in this case, R201 was a 4.7K, um, and I just increased that a little bit. I wasn't, I didn't think that was probably the problem, but um, went from a 4.7 to around a 6K. There was a, about a 35% increase in voltage, so I just kind of linearly increased this resistance here. Um, in order to try to bias this um, current correctly from here. But I don't think that really would have mattered. Where we're running into trouble was um, the sync pin was uh, getting a too high voltage. So where does the sync signal come from? So it actually is reference to ground and also the auxiliary output that powers the chip. So what happened, and I observed this on the scope too, is that um, when it was initially trying to charge up the output capacitors, um, we were having too high a voltage on this pin. So the primary was being energized for quite a while and it wasn't able to energize the output appropriately and the voltage was climbing higher and higher on this uh, rail here and because of that the uh, sink voltage was getting too high. So what I've done is I um, decreased the uh, resistance here, or increased the resistance, decreased the resistance value. Um, it was a 30, they had a 39k ohm uh, resistor here and a 27k ohm resistor here. So in order to pull it down, this rail down more, I just um, decreased this to a 20k from a 27k, uh, and that actually seemed to solve the problem. So going in and modifying the circuits, you might come into other problems as it is, you know, tailored specifically for, you know, the outputs they're looking for and everything. But in this case, after a little studying of the data sheet, we were able to figure out that um, that the, the sync pin. We we're having problems with the sync pin. So modified that and everything uh, seems to work just fine. Um, I'm actually able to get about 50 
watts, almost 60 watts, out of this, uh, out of the board that I have before it uh, starts to drop out. So, uh, looks like everything worked out. In that case, after we made the appropriate uh, modifications. All right, so time for just a quick test of the uh, power supply here. Um, the reason that I oops, that I um, wanted to modify the output voltage is because I wanted to run these uh, LED strips, uh, backlight strips from these TVs, just uh, some lighting uh, on top of the cabinets here, and um, I was running one strip with a little uh, DC to DC step up converter, which was working fine. It was pretty much running at its limit though, as far as uh, what the chip can do. Um, so in the last video I went over the uh, external switch uh, for the MC34063 and I was planning on using this possibly to run both of these strips, but you know, there are losses. So we were able to modify this here, this power supply and now we can test the strips out. So um, I just have a, a switch that I built in here. We plug that in. This little remote uh, switch. Use the IR remote as well. But it, it also has manual control, so we'll just test it out with this. Um, okay, let's plug in the power supply. And let's turn on the power supply. Let's just take a quick voltage measurement as well. So um, let's measure the voltage here on these uh, the barrel jack from the I think the polarity is going to be wrong, but so we have 23 volts coming in. So, um, we run it at a half brightness, and look at that, they're very light, uh, very bright. Let's go to full brightness, and we should be dumping in about, let's see what we're getting at the, uh, the terminals here. Getting 22.7 at the terminal, so not bad. A um, little bit of voltage drop. Let's see what we're getting at these output terminals. 22.7. So we're dropping a few hundred milliamps. I don't know, we're actually getting 22, 22.8 at the rail jack. So with all the um, voltage dropped over the line, we're getting losing not too much. Alrighty, well it looks like everything's working. I'm going to put this in this enclosure and uh, thanks for watching.